welcome to the hand toolery i'm andrew malacy today i'm going to show you how i made this shoulder slash rabbit plane uh just with some really simple tools hacksaw a file a hammer then just some uh, bar stock steel here and it's actually pretty simple the only thing you really got to do is you've got to just put a lot of time into it into shaping it all and you need to get an iron or make an iron and that's pretty much it. I hope you enjoy this and thanks for watching. I took the time to square up the ends of this piece. This is just a piece of two inch wide by one inch eight thick steel that I got from Lowe's. Cost a couple bucks and it's nothing special. Got two very close to equal size pieces there. I'm gonna square them up together in the vise. Now one thing about this is that in this bar steel there's like a little bit of a hollow in it. So maybe you want to make sure that you choose yours carefully. Alright, now that I've got these more or less kind of trued up, I put these ones that had the little dip in it, I'm going to put on the inside and then what I'll do is I'll remove the outside, I'll leave the, the belly on the outside. It'll be a lot of removing on the outside but it's not that big of a deal. So we've got our two pieces that are pretty much ready to go. If you want to do a, uh, a metal bottom, you're going to have to cut another piece of metal. So here's the blade I bought. It's a Wood River. It costs like 15 bucks or something. I don't remember. I'll put it the link in the description. But now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take it out. So I'm going to take it and I'm going to measure it. It's exactly three quarters of an inch, I believe. So accounting for these two, the width of these two, I've got to make a metal piece that goes between them, that'll give me three quarters. But I'm gonna probably go a tiny little bit heavy on it. That way, whenever I remove stock from the sides, it gets down to three quarters. Then I'll remove a little bit more, so it's just a, a hair short of three quarters wide. All right, since my two pieces are an eighth inch wide, so this needs to be a tad over a half inch, which is it, which it is. I'm gonna stay to the waist side of the line there and just cut away, and then I'll have my bottom. Alright, I'm very satisfied with the straightness of that cut. Believe it or not, my learning to saw better in wood has helped me a ton in learning to saw better in, through metal with a hacksaw. Alright, I've got the second side cleaned up now. I have to test, I've got it started to get cleaned up here. So I'm going to test to see if I have a uniform thickness here. Just you're going to use my marking gauge which comes in really handy. That's really, really good. I'm just going to keep it as it is. At this point, all I've done is some hacksawing and quite a bit of filing. And I've got my three major components, plus the iron. So if we stack them all up, we can see that the metal is just a tiny bit higher, which is fine, because it'll get uh, filed down. And the other thing is, is that these are all the same length. Then we're gonna get a piece of wood to sandwich in between it. It'll be this thickness right here. And then. Before we do all that though, we're going to glue, we're going to drill through both of these and do our locator pins. And then when we do that, we'll put the wood in and glue it up.
the next morning. I've got all my pieces ready to go. But you can see just how it all goes together. All right, I've marked the mouth opening on where I want that to occur. Now we have to measure for where we want the blade to come out. And I'm gonna say I want it to come out just slightly above halfway on the back. So I'm gonna make it one and an eighth, just past the halfway point. So I want it to come out right there. And I'm gonna transfer this end point over here. That means I'm gonna show exactly where my the bottom of the wedge opening is. Now I'm gonna put my template on here and trace a 10 degree line on that, or an 11 degree line on that. Now I've got my wedge, I'm gonna saw away that material there. Now one quick thing is, I'm gonna put this back on here, and I'm gonna trace out, I'm gonna trace this out quite a bit farther than where I want it, because the actual end of the plane is right here. And so the wedge will come out right, as you can see, will come out right on the corner. There's our 10 degree ed wedge angle. And I'm gonna, actually, I'm gonna replicate the system I did last time where I'm gonna cut out two pe one piece, split it into two, and then I'll have a decorative element. See that? So that mess of lines right there, we're gonna cut away this and this. That way we don't have to lose any distance on the on the plane really at all. Then I'll cut this line and we'll have a large wedge that will be split into two. I really like this design, this design here. So taking from right here, I'm gonna make a curve. There we go. So now it's time to cut this out. All right, after the first cut, I cleaned up my lines uh, with a plane and they fit together, these two pieces fit together nearly perfectly and I'm gonna cut straight through and save this piece. All right, so I've got my wedge all cut out and I've planed it all up so that it fits together really, really nice. There's the straight edge on the bottom is what we needed to uh, work together as. I'm really satisfied with that. So now this is gonna be removed, that's my wedge and that is the plain body. That's the plain body there. And we'll drop that on there. It's gonna go basically like that. And then you can see we're right on our lines, which is really, really nice. I mean, can't get much closer than that. The next thing is, we're gonna mark out some points where we wanna put some pins, because we need some locators. Now, one thing I realized I forgot to do was take into account this piece here, so I should have made this at an, an inch rather than an inch and an eighth and then that would have raised it up an eighth of an inch in the end, and I just forgot about that. So whatever, it's gonna be higher. I don't really wanna tempt fate at this point. So it'll be an inch and a quarter up as it leaves the, the back. I still think that'll be comfortable, so I'm gonna leave it. I set my score for a half inch, measured in half, and then used my fine point Sharpie on my three corners. Then I didn't do anything here yet. I'm gonna get, I didn't do anything around the wedge area yet. I'm gonna drill through these first, and then I will go from there. All right, now that I got my three locator holes drilled, I'm gonna bring these together in the correct orientation, and they're gonna get clamps. All right, so using the previous, the holes I just drilled, I'm gonna mark through. All righty, I've got three locator holes drilled through on both sides, which is great. Now I'm gonna widen those holes out and I'm gonna make it the size of the pins I'm gonna use. So the pins I'm gonna be using are these small nails. Now I've got my next drill bit in, and we'll see if we can get a pretty nice, tight, and exact fit. I'm coming back on the inside, and I'm gonna clean up these holes just with a larger drill bit. Not gonna drill through them, just clean up the, the burr. Our next step is to glue up the the inside here, we're gonna glue it up all together like that, being sure to align 
the pin, uh, the mouth and such. But I'm gonna take this first to some high grit sandpaper or some, some really coarse sandpaper to rough it up so it gets a good adhesion with the super glue. All right, now that this is glued, I've cleaned, uh, I've cleaned up the sides, it's all flush. I'm gonna take my other two now, my other two pieces, and I'm gonna mark their location. Once the first one's in, the rest is much, much easier. Got the locator pins in, and this thing is solid already. I'm really, really pleased with how solid it is. Not bad. To close is pretty tight. Not much shifting at all. So I'm, I'm very, very pleased with this. All right, now what we're gonna do is mark out where we're gonna put other pins. We have to think that this is gonna be very, very uh, thin here. So I'm definitely going to put a pin up here behind the on the top of the wedge. Then the mouth will be around here. So I'll probably put another one here. All right, so I got all my locator pins and uh, rivets, I guess you would call them, drilled. So these ones are going to be brass along with the top in the middle right there. That guy, the much closer to the top, will support the wedge pressure as it comes in, but it'll be uh, a nail. So will that guy. So I'll have two nails and then four brass rivets. And the nails, like I said, will blend in. But then I think the four brass rivets, one, two, three, one, two, three, four, I can already sort of envision how it's gonna be. At this point, I don't have much more to do. This is almost ready for business. I will, uh, I will need to mark the mouth before I continue. I should, uh, and I'll do that by removing the locator pins and marketing on this, marking it on the sole. All right. So to mark the mouth, what I'm going to do is take the wedge. I'm going to put it in. I'm just going to extend the mouth like that, and I'm going to mark the. Mark it all the way through. Then the front of the mouth is gonna come out there. All right, now I've drilled the holes in the bottom. I'm gonna uh, wind them out, then put a countersink in them, and then I'm gonna sink in the screws. I've got some slotted, just some Raider slotted head screws because these are gonna, it doesn't go very deep on the side and so I can file them down when I'm done. You can see that everything's starting, starting to fit together really nicely. Any little gaps like in the front there, I'm pretty sure will be taken up by the epoxy. All right, I've gone about enlarging the holes. Enlarge, yeah, enlarging the holes. I've got four spaces for brass. One, two, three, four. That one I messed up, obviously. And then two for nails. And now I'm just taking, as you can see, screws and I'm putting in my drill and filing them down so they fit through. I didn't want to make huge, huge holes here, so I'm filing them down a little bit, down to the shank, rather than the size of the threads. Then when it comes time, I'm gonna glue it all, hammer these through the rest of the way. They're a tight fit right now, but they'll go. And then I'm gonna peen them on either end. So to do that, I've drilled the regular size hole through that I want, then I've come back with a bit of a countersink, as you can see there. Not very deep, but just enough so when it peens out and spreads, it acts as a clamp and sucks it. I don't want to do this after I've let the glue dry, because then it could separate the glue or mess up the bond or something. So I'm going to glue it and put these uh, rivets, quote unquote, through all at the same time. I've got these. I've got these brass screws, which are like two for a buck thirty at Lowe's. I tighten up real tight, then I run it in reverse. I 
very close. Okay, here it is ready for glue up. I've got all my, again, quote unquote rivets ready to go. Here's what it looks like from the back side. And I'm gonna cut these nails off much shorter now. And that way the head acts as the, uh, a stop and I'll just peen the heads over. And then when those are good, I'll peen the other sides over. So yeah, we're basically ready for glue. I have a really good, I have a really good uh, connection at the bottom there. It meets nice and tight. So I'm pretty satisfied at this point. I'm using Gorilla Glue 5 Minute Epoxy. Okay, so as far as my plan goes, this was an absolute fail. But I don't think it matters. I think it's gonna work out regardless. What I ended up having to do was just clamp it all. And my fingers got all covered on the epoxy, which I just, I don't know. I thought I could do it a lot more smoothly than that, and I couldn't. So I ended up having to wash my hands, put on gloves, and uh, clamp it all down. It did not work at all like I planned. No big deal. Okay, so it was a success after all. I let it dry a little bit and that made it much easier to work with. You can see I peened everything over. It looks pretty okay. I'm really pleased with the nails, how they turned out. And how, and on the back side, looks really good. Everything seemed to suck up together really nice. The only thing that happened as I should have anticipated, but the top broke off and left it a little shallow in the front which, you know, I'm gonna have to deal with. I'm gonna glue it back together and see how it looks. And then, just depending, I'll either modify the shape or not, but I think it'll be okay. I'm not that worried about it. At this point, it feels really, really solid. There's no, it doesn't seem like it's gonna separate at all. Now I'm gonna cut this little tail off. Okay, now I've got this sucker gluing back up and I think we're gonna it's gonna be a good fix. All right, I've made a little template. Let's see if we place it on the very back here. You see that the tip of the paper goes right on that line. So I'll make sure to saw in front of that. Okay, so you can see I've drilled a bunch of little holes around the perimeter. I left some relief space on the top and side here because I'm gonna widen those with larger bits. And I transfer them to the back. All right, the first cut is looking pretty good. I ended up right beside my circle, which isn't bad, and right on the other circle, which is better. I basically followed my lines, and I'm just trying to clear out the waste with the drill because it's much easier. I sawed out a section with the hacksaw here just to see exactly where I was, but I can feel when I put this drill bit in, I can feel I'm just above my line, maybe a 16th, perhaps a more. I'm just sort of exploring around and making sure I do not miss my, that I do not hit my ramps area for this for the wedge. I think I'm pretty close but haven't touched it yet so now I'm just clearing out the waste and trying to make it work.
All right, that's what I want to see. This is already starting to look quite nice. And you can see this, the wedge. I'm probably, wow, 3 16 above it on the one side at least. I definitely missed it though, which is great. Now the tedious task of filing. All right, I got one of my first sides mostly cleaned up this back right here. Getting close to the line, got it rounded, getting close. I can't even tell you how sick I am of filing, but I finally got the mouth pretty close to final. You can see there's some variation, like a little hump there I gotta get rid of. But the, I spent most of my time on the bed angle right there. There was, I just couldn't seem to file exactly parallel to the, to the surface. And so I'd leave these tiny little humps in the front there. This is by far the hardest of the whole thing. But everything looks good. Now I've got to file away all these rivets and put in and just sand it down. time to time just make sure you're checking for square across the sole you don't want to be taking it out of flat or square or true or anything so just make sure you keep on checking it all right this, I got some more progress here I took this and I just this uh, little strip there and I got away some of the low spots because I'm not sure if I'm gonna take it down that deep but you can see I've got a pretty close to done finish on it. Again, I'm still square. I worked on the, the toe of it. I've still got to work on the heel since I glued that in already, which is probably a bonehead mistake. It's hard to get access back here on the heel. Uh, I've still got to do the finishing touches on the mouth. I'm really pleased with the shape. It works fine. I just want to make sure it looks perfect.
right, that's it. That wraps up the build. I cannot believe I finished it. Honestly, I thought it was gonna go on forever. It took me a long time. I forgot how much effort was involved in this, but without any further ado, here's the final results. Yes, there's a nick at the top where the file is. I kind of like it. There's imperfections. It's impossible to get your fingerprints off and keep them off. As you can see, I love the look of the rivets, but yes, there are defects just about everywhere. Here's the base or the sole. One thing that really matters is it's got to be square and I'm pretty satisfied with how square it is. Now on the other side, I really enjoy it. I love the look of the rounded top there. I love the feel of it. And then this fits so nicely when you, when you're planing and I hold it like a one finger there, then my thumb in the other side, and it doesn't even interfere with the uh, chips or the shavings escaping. If you want to compare it with the other one I previously made, the one I showed at the beginning of the video, they're almost identical. I've got a longer iron. This one's shorter in overall in length. You can see it's about a good quarter inch or more shorter. And also the mouth is wider because of just how long the blade is. So it's just a product of having to work with what I had left over. I love the length and it actually feels a tiny bit heavier, but it's a pain working with this little iron. However, the long iron makes it easier to adjust, but I don't get to put my hands all the way in the end, which is what I do with this one. I use this one much more like that. The big um, dumb thing I did is I bought, I had now have two three quarter inch shoulder planes, which I sh don't know what I was thinking. I should have bought a half inch or a one inch blade and gone from there, but the process would have been exactly the same. Literally, it wouldn't have presented any other challenges except the width. So I don't know what I was thinking, but now I have two of them and I'm gonna use them for a while and see what happens and we'll go from there. But quite frankly, it doesn't perform really any better. The new one, this one doesn't perform really any better than this one. And I guess that's, I don't know, a testament to the way I made this one initially. And I, the other thing is that making this with hand tools is really, really not hard. What it is, it's just labor intensive. So, well, I hope the video showed you enough detail and gives you enough uh, motivation and orientation to help if you want to do this. It's really quite accessible. Just use straight up bar steel from Lowe's is where I bought it. I just use hacksaw, file, sandpaper for everything, and then planes to do the wood. It was really not hard at all. I've got a SketchUp file for this available, so uh, click the link below if you'd like that. It's in my Etsy store. I really hope you enjoyed this video and that was useful. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you around here for the next one.